Hey there you guys, Captain D Leader here today and chapter One Piece 1074 is out. We're gonna go ahead and be checking out the scans, seeing what's going on. First things first, we're gonna start off with the cover story. We got Caesar, Judge, and Queen, and it looks like they're all fighting each other. There's very much a lot of commotion going on. Might be a reason that they probably broke up down the line. But yeah, we got Caesar with a punch going right into Queen's face. We got Judge stabbing Caesar right in his stomach. It looked like he's using his devil fruit ability to block it. And then we just got Queen throwing some punches right here. And uh, yeah, they're fighting. So who knows what they're fighting. Maybe it's a difference of how they want to how they want to do devil fruits or what they should focus on. But it looks like uh, the reason they may have broken up was possibly because they just couldn't get along with each other. And um, I think uh, it's going to be going that direction from how Mad started to how Mad's ended and um, a little bit more of Vegapunk's back backstory. I think that's where the cover story is going, but you know, you never know. It could throw us for a loop, especially with Oda's writing style. But yeah, so we start off the chapter right. We start a chapter in the Fabrio Stratum of Egghead Island. And there's a lot of commotion going on, explosions here and there, gunshots going off here and there. And uh, we got we got a posse still, right? And uh, he seems to be a, it's one of the police posse he's still, the ones that we've seen earlier in the arc. And then um, and the, there's a Marine guy, he's asking why the posse is attacking the Marines. And now he, he goes to hold up a, a, a gun or a, a shotgun or whatever. And he's like, he was like, get back, you're, you're hurting our men. And boom, he lets a shot off, and uh, it doesn't do anything. Um, there's a, a there's some kind of technique that the the posse used to use, and um, it's like a bubble shield. It's not um, not like the pop off fruit, but like a bubble shield, something that Vegapunk invented. And yeah, it just blocks the bazooka attack or whatever. And I mean, wasn't really gonna do any damage anyway. It's, 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 it's guns in one piece versus a posse feast. So yeah, he blocks the, the posse feast of blocks the attack, and he just mm, melees him like to oblivion. And yeah, it does nothing. And um, so right here where we learned that uh, there's a third generation of uh, the posse feasters, the um, Mark Three, and uh, they seem pretty strong. It's, the police posse feasters seem pretty strong. They uh, they're smart. They know what they're doing. They take orders. They can speak for themselves and act on their own. They uh, they have the whole nine yards of what it is to be well Vegapunk's creations. And uh, yeah, they none of them none of them seem to know like uh exactly what the new Pacifistas um actually doing. But yeah, he uh the Pacifist is going around capturing the rings and uh it seems like uh it looked like there's a space inside the Mark Threes where like they can open it up and put Marines in it and they can't get let out because like there's a scene where they're walking and like the guys are like banging on the chest and um they can't you know, they can't get out. So yeah, we got uh, some pretty uh some pretty good policemen here that are doing their job. Um, uh so going down we uh we come down to Sin Tomorrow. It looked like Sin Tomorrow's up and uh, he might he might have been the one to uh to take down the, the stratosphere the interior dome and let the and let the cp0 get inside i'm not sure but uh he does say that it's, de it's um deactivated um or he said he said the frontier dome is sealed he said he sealed it up also yeah he uh he's he's woken up he's he's conscious now he's moving around he's giving orders and um we uh we find out that uh there's 50 of the mark threes on Egghead Island. So I'm thinking like, maybe like 10, 10 of them is like a lot, you know, and they are, they are pretty strong to a, to a degree, but then you have 50 of them marching out, like 50, like picture, picture like pre-time skip and the straw hands are fighting like 50 pacifistas. That's what I'm, that's kind of the feeling I'm getting here. Like, like, the Marines, if, I mean, the Marines are coming with Kazaro and one of the Gorosei, and they probably got a few others on the ship. And it's, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be a one-sided battle, pirate or Marines. So they both got some heavy hitters. <laughs> so yeah, we keep the pieces on our side. I don't, I'm not too sure what's gonna happen. 
and uh, there was a there was an order to go guard the coast in uh, in case any marines tried like some weird tactics. And I'm thinking like a good a good uh, a good display of power would be if Kazaro arrives to Egghead and he wipes out like if not all at least like half of the Mark Threes. Like like imagine how it would be if we just seen like a huge like a yellow Kamehameha wave of laser beam from Kazaro just wipes out three. All three of the Mark Threes, all all of the Mark Threes at once, and then there's no there's no more Mark Threes. But yeah, that'd be that'd be that'd be wicked. Um, so yeah, we uh, they still they still can't find Vega Punk's body. Vega Punk is a uh, has just disappeared. I don't. I think. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a reason behind it, but uh, it's definitely it's definitely they definitely can't leave the island without a fight. Before they can find Vega Punk, the um, the fight is gonna be on Egghead Island. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, we got Luffy. He's, he's running around all over the place, and like I think Gear Third. I mean, gear, <laughs> not Gear Third. I think Gear Fifth. Just it really just seemed like he just made some real tired after he uses it for an extended period of time. Cause he's just sitting there like ah, I've been ah, walking around, running around the whole place. Ah, I still can't find Vega Punk. Where is he? Yada yada. And um, then we got then we got Zoro, Stussy, and Broke walking in looking super badass in uh, the Vega Punk gear with the boots. And I think it look cool. Like we, I want to see Zoro. I want to see Zoro j just do some fights in the in the suit that they're wearing. And yeah, we got this scene where like uh we have like pretty much all of the the Vega Punks all in one room and the majority of the Straw Hats in one room. And they're all just trying they're all just trying to figure out. What's going on with Vegapunk's body, or where is that, and where's Bunny? Just for Shaka to just be like, hey, uh, I mean, Bunny hasn't disappeared anywhere. She's uh, she's right here on the monitor, and Luffy's over there, like, like <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't have told me that earlier. Like, you just watch me, you just watch me run around to the point where I destroyed the boot that I can't pay you back for, it, and you just now tell me that Bunny is uh, pretty much can be found right here on the monitor, and um, they're looking on the monitors for for Vegapunk, and um. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the Seraphim, they have destroyed a, a big part of the Stratafilm. So uh, they can't look at every single monitor. So there's that. You know, getting to, getting a little deeper in the chapter, we get to a point where uh, we're actually looking into Kuma's memories and God knows how long I've been waiting to know what has been going on with Kuma. Ever since Thriller Bark, we just went wondering what's up with this guy, like. And I, at this point, I think Oda's just like he's just teasing us, like, like bro, like we're at head, we're at Egghead. We met the daughter. We know he's in the Revolutionary Army. He's climbing, he's climbing the red line. Like he's been a slave. Like bro, just just tell us the backstory. Like quit, 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 like just giving us piece by piece. Like just 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 give us the backstory. Like I'm I'm ready for it. It's been like at least like Thriller Bark was like. I don't know, 14 years ago, like, bro, just just give just give us the backstory, please. And we're in the memory bubble, and uh, Bunny, she can see kind of like what's actually going on. In the uh, in the memory bubble, the, she sees Kuma, he's pretty beaten down, to the point where like he just he just crying, he got scratches all over him. He, uh, I don't in this scene he doesn't have his ears, so his ears might be. Uh, um, like a creation from when he ate his uh, devil fruit. And I bet, I feel like he probably found his devil fruit somewhere on the island, and that's how he was able to escape. Cause um, when in the scene, he was trying to get away, but he couldn't go anywhere. And uh, he's just sitting there and, and they're like, they start, they, the guys start beating on him, telling him like, if you leave, they're gonna kill us too. So he's definitely in a place where he can't leave or else the rest of them will get killed. So it's looking like, like maybe he was born into slavery. This, 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 this is what I'm getting here. He's, he's probably born into slavery and uh, he wants to escape, but he can't escape because the other celestial dragons will kill him and all the other people that he's around. And he can't really escape that way. And then we got Bunny. She's she's barely able to hold back tears looking at uh, Kuma. And like she's trying to she's trying to reach out to him, but like I feel like it's like a it's like an image where like every time you get closer, it just stays the same distance. So she's like running towards him and she just can't get closer. And she just sobbing her eyes. I'm like, oh my gosh, my father, like what, what what's going on? I can't, like, please stop hurting him, please. 
and then boom, she just like boom, she gets knocked out of the bubble. And uh, like she can't, she can't even, she can't even mentally handle watching her dad get beaten to an extent like that. Now, when I say they're beaten, like, like it's like it's like two, two, three guys, and they got they got sticks. Like they're they're like wailing on him. Like, like they like it is bad. Like I don't I, I want to I don't know how to put it in the word, but he's bloody. He's screaming. He's scratched up. He wants to get away. Like it's, it's Kuma has had it hard. Like. I think he looks even worse in this scene than he looks trying to climb a red line with all, with all like the the robot smoke coming from him and the blood just coming out of his forehead type deal. It looks pretty bad. So she actually gets knocked out of the bowl. She can't handle it. But um, I, I, they just Otis teasing us again. Like hey, she she got to get back to the bubble, So we got to come back to find out uh what's more to the backstory. But hey, it's good. At least we at least we at least we're here. We getting we getting piece by piece because. We can't focus on one thing for too long. We, we we got we got a lot of other things that's interesting that we gonna that we wanna find out right about now. So yeah. So we got uh we got Pythagoras. He's uh he's running through uh he's running through Egghead Island trying to find the uh, the Stella Punk body and then like he he hears something and it, like it, like he looks back and like kaboom like an explosion happens. And uh, I don't, we don't know where the explosion came from or why an explosion just happened. Um, my guess is maybe uh, maybe one of the Marines that arrived to Egghead Island. Maybe it's even someone from like a, another Marine base that's close because if Kazar was in, uh, Kazar was Saturn still trying to cross the, the Grand Line or whatever, trying to get all the way to the other side of the world, it might even be like some Marines that are closer and that just arrived to Egghead Island, who knows? And uh, get into one of the juiciest part of the chapters is uh we got big news Morgan big news big news <laughs> yeah I like I like I like I like Morgan's he's a he's a funny guy like he, he's a funny guy so yeah we got him he's flying through the air with his with his big news ship big news spaceship or ooh, I don't know what you call it aircraft in one piece I don't just call it a, a airship yeah he's it's in, it's in an airship. So yeah, we got big news, Morgan. He's uh over there. He just he just got the big scoop, the scoop of the century, that uh the world government is trying to assassinate Vegapunk, and that none other than Straw Hat Luffy is on the island as well. And um and uh, he knows that uh he's talking about how the world may not like Vegapunk being assassinated because outside of Vegapunk being a very selfish guy who uh. <laughs> Excuse me, a very selfish guy who puts science first. He uh, he has done a lot of good, like provide a lot of light and energy and power to a lot of citizens. Uh, a lot of citizens, a lot of citizens in One Piece have a, have a good reason to actually be fond of Vegapunk. Um, but I guess he just knows too much now. So uh, they gotta kill him. And um, so he the way he decide, I'm pretty sure big news, Morgan. I'm pretty sure he knows that uh, Vegapunk. Um, he's he just asked Straw Hat to be like his his guardian to get him off the island, and just which bring me back to maybe uh to um the swamp guy I'm forgetting his name the guy with the swamp 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 fruit. He might he might be working for him, for Morgan because how else is this news just getting off the island? Like he's he's clearly plugged in with the government because um he said he he mentioned that the government will be appreciative. Of the of the headline that he's gonna put in the story, which is pretty much um, the like Straw Hat. There's a there's a skirmish going on at the Navy base, and the Straw Hats have taken them hostage. It's taking Vegapunk hostage, and uh, the the Navy the Navy should be good with the contribution. So he's probably like got someone that's actually in the Navy being a spy for him, or maybe it's a swamp guy who's just able to like send back information about what's going on. But yeah. So we're going, so we got that. And we got a headline that's gonna shake the world coming out very soon. I wanna, I wanna, ooh, I bet. I bet when the when the newspaper comes out, it's gonna be one of the times where like Oda, he gives us a, like a a reaction from some of our favorite pirates. We might see what, what, what Crocodile thinks and what Mihawk thinks. Maybe what Shanks thinks. Um, Bartolo May Mayu, um, Bar Barto from the Barto Club. You know, the Luffy fanboy. Um, yeah, 
So yeah, I want to see uh, some reactions from uh, Luffy's progress just beyond the world and how the other Marines and how some of the other guys might react. And getting down towards the end of the chapter, we have none other than King of the Evil Black Drum Wapo sitting right next to none other than Princess of Arabasta, Nefertari Vivi, one of the straw hats that we've never forgotten about. Yeah, so, so um, how did uh, how did Wapo and VV end up together? Uh, it looks like they're on they're on top of uh, Morgan's airship, and uh, Morgan's took them in, and uh, VV's over there. She's um, you know how, you know how VV is. She's not like a she's not like a, a dazzle in a stress art. She's like like hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what's <laughs> like and uh and um Wapo over there telling him like don't be rude. Morgan just took us in. And Wapos, he's over there looking scared. Like, you guys, you guys, shh, be quiet. The, the government might be listening to us. They're, they're going to erase us. So it looks like he knows what's going on with, uh, you know, the kingdom that was uh, erased that I somehow forgot the name of. Yeah, so I wonder how uh, Vifi ended up with Wapo. I'm thinking maybe she, uh, maybe she, like, maybe during the midst of battle, uh, Morgan was like there and he was like, you know, he's lurking around in the shadows trying to find a big scoop on a reverie and throughout and throughout the commotion He uh, he thought it would be a good idea to just let um, VV um, Get on his airship and escape but Just because of stuff like that shakes the world government and Wapo Wapo just happened to be there like hey, please Please help me. Let me let me ride your airship, please. He he's that kind of guy like he like he's just gonna try to get our situation to to benefit himself so yeah, we got the chapter 10, 24, One Piece with um, Vivi. She finally showed up. She's alive and well. She doesn't look damaged. She looks like she's pretty okay. And now we just gotta know, uh, we gotta know what happened with Sabo. And uh, another thing, that, another another scene that I like in uh, this chapter, when uh, when um, they're getting ready to go try to find Vegapunk, and then you got uh, you got Sanji over here. He's he 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 looks at York. York is like. I, I didn't. I didn't. I, forget, I didn't think York was that tall because I don't think we even seen her standing like next to the other um, Vega Punks. But man, she's tall. Like she's as tall as um the first Vega Punk we seen. Um, I'm forgetting the name. I know. I know Pythagoras, Edison, uh, Shaka, and uh, you know the other three. But yeah, we got York. And um, another another point I wanted to make while I'm thinking about it. So do no one think York resembles Bonnie or is it just me? Not, the, dude, am I the only one that think York resembles Bunny? Food for the thought. But yeah, we got Sanji's falling out with heart eyes. You know, he's always falling out over some women. And then uh, they getting ready to go look for Vegapunk. And then we got we got Sanji's like, hold up, hold up, Goro. Like, you're you're gonna look for Vegapunk? Like, no, no. You're gonna stay here because we're gonna find Vegapunk and then we're gonna have to find you. We, you just stay here. And I, li I like the scene where... Um, Luffy and Zoro are sitting on the couch and like Luffy's over there just like <sighs> and um, Zoro's like a uh, Zoro just sitting there like man damn what a pain like you been running around all over the place and uh Luffy's like man I always go all out man and I think uh I just think Gear 5th just really drains him whenever he uses it but it's just cool to see like we got our we got Zoro and Luffy sitting here with Kaku and uh Luchi just sitting on the floor like just passed out and like, it's pretty cool because like these are the two two of the strongest guys on AK Island right now, and we got Luffy and Zoro who's like, yeah, if these guys get up, we're they're they're not going anywhere because we're here, like we I'm I'm here, <laughs> type deal. Um, so yeah, what do you what do you guys think? Uh, the cover story of the match is going. You think uh, I think it just I think it's gonna get down to the root of why match broke up and how Vegapunk ended up in the the world government. Um, I, I I can't I cannot think of the life of me why why Morgan and VV would be together. I don't I don't think it's like some kind of like they like their alliance or something like that or they became friends with each other. I just think Morgan took in VV because of because he's Morgan and Wapo just happened to be there and need, who needed his ass saved as well. Um, Kizaro and Saturn have not showed up yet. I think when Kizaro shows up, it's gonna be pretty brutal. 
Um, I don't. I think. I think for the most part, I'm not sure we're gonna see Saturn like just jump right into action. He probably just gonna get there and just command a Seraphim before, and he probably gotta be like pushed against the wall himself before he decides to like take off his jacket or some shit and go shirtless like Ugh! and uh, start fighting. Um, yeah. So uh, that's the video for today. You guys, let me know what you think. Um, have a good one.